Welcome back everybody to the Super Duty Build. This is another one of those videos where I filmed it over the last couple of weeks. So now I have a mismatch of video clips that I'm going to try to organize into a coherent video. Let's start with this. Here is my avionics rack that I think everybody has seen. The latest thing that I've done is I've added a Dynon bus to the back of it or the the side towards the firewall. And that just connects to the frame. Down here you can see with two rivets on each side, it's just an angle that I modified to fit in there. And one of the neat things that I've done here is I've taken both of these angles, and if you'll notice this corner, the top corners here, I've rounded the aluminum angles to match this Dynon bus so you don't see it from the front. They're, they're the exact same uh, corner as the bus. So anyway, it's nice and sturdy on here. It doesn't wobble or move at all. And uh, I have two connections already made. This is the Air Inc. 429 that goes into this side. This is the engine monitor. And you can see that just plugs into this side. The one Dynon screen will plug into here. And as you've already seen, it just the, the cables daisy chain all the way over to the other EFIS screen. Now at this point, I just want to get an idea of where cables and wires will need to run behind the panel. In order to do that, I'd like to have all of the avionics and switches and circuit breakers in the panel so I can start to figure out some of the wiring. An easy first step is to connect the remote USB port to the back of the Dynon. Before I put the avionics tray in here, I will show you these cables here. These are just one foot cables from Dynon. They come with both ends already installed on the cable. They're pre-made. So this one here will go into a bus, which I'll show you in just a minute. But then you can see there's another one coming from the EFIS screen that just comes around here to the bottom radio. And then it basically just daisy chains. It goes from here up to the middle one, and then from the middle one up here to the top one, and it goes from the top one over to the second EFA screen. Now connecting all those one foot cables was just quick and easy and kind of fun to do. And I did that just by looking at this nice colorful schematic that Dynon has. And if you look at the top, the EFIS on the top left, you'll see the orange line coming out the bottom goes to the hub. And then there's another orange line coming out and just daisy chaining uh, all those little panels together. And it ends up on the right side all the way over on the second EFA screen. Now that colorful drawing is nice to get a general overview of how the system goes together. But if you want the actual wiring diagrams, go to Dyn on Avionics. And up here there's a tab called Learn. We'll click on that. Then click on Documentation and then go over to the Skyview system. You can see they have user guides, and if you download the user guide, that's really good information about how to operate the Dynon system. But if you go to installation guides, there's two of them you're going to want to download, and that's, well, probably all of them, but for now, uh, I've just downloaded the, this first one and the second one. So the first one has a lot of good information about installing the actual Dynon components, and it does have wiring pin diagrams in there. But then you can also go down to the second one here and download that one. And this one actually is a 15 page wiring diagram that tells you how to wire most of the components in the system. So both of these are really good and definitely worth downloading. Now I printed out those wiring diagrams and I printed out that picture too, just to have it. And I've put them all in my binder here with my builder's instruction manual. And what I wanted to show you is on the back of the front page, their diagram on here is actually a little bit different. You can see they have the two EFA screens here and you'll notice each one of them goes to the hub. So they have both connected to the hub here. So the connections are just a little bit different on here than they are on this, uh, this diagram here. And I'm guessing because everything kind of goes into a hub, it probably doesn't matter. But that's something later on I'll verify with Dynon. 
But this is the 15 pages here. I printed them out front and back of their wiring diagrams. And it's really nice. This is display power, so it shows the displays. It shows you the cables that go into displays, the wires, where they go. And it has uh, each thing. This is for the ADS-B 472. This page up here is a transponder. So they've got the audio system, autopilot wiring. It's just very, very nice wiring diagram. So like I said, I think it's kind of helpful to print them out and have them ready in the shop. So I wanted to show you just what I've been doing on the airplane. As I've mentioned, I have these cables connected here. These are all the little one foot cables. And this hub that I have right here, I used to have it on the front rail. I originally built it here, but it was just kind of jammed up a little bit in here. So I moved it to the back, which gives those cables a little bit more room. And then this, these are the big cables that come out of the, the Dynon screens. There's one on each side. This is my autopilot disconnect switch up here. This will get spliced into, I'm guessing, probably this, this uh, wiring here. I have an ethernet cable that goes from one Dynon to the other. This, is a, this cable comes from Dynon. And you'll notice everything right now is just kind of sitting in here like this. What I like to do is just kind of connect things and see where the cables go. And then as I get further into it, I start routing those as neatly as I can. In the airplane itself, I have not really started actual wiring and putting pins in and connectors and things like that. What I've been doing is just the very basics, routing cables. So you can see I have a couple cables that come from the back of the airplane forward. And that's these two right here. There's a gray cable for the elevator trim. And this cable goes all the way back to the rudder where I have a Aero LED's sun tail light on the back of the rudder. Uh, so these two cables come up and I have it routed through here. It goes through an Adele clamp back here just to hold it secure. It comes through the big opening right here. And then you can see I just have some clamps along this center tunnel all the way forward. And then from there, they can go up behind the panel and get connected to where they need to be connected. And there will be a few other wires that get added to that bundle. For example, I still have to run the wires for the beacon on the bottom of the airplane. This big cable right here goes back to, if I can zoom in here, you'll see the two AHARs. There's a primary and a backup, and there's a splitter cable that connects those two together. Then it goes into one cable, which is this big white one. And I have that routed up through here pretty much the same way. It goes through an Adele clamp right there to hold it. It comes up through this big hole. And then I'm kind of debating right now if I want to bring it over here with these or just run it along this side, maybe put some more clamps and run it on this side. One of the things that would help is to have the torque tube in here with a control stick. And my control stick right now is at the powder coaters. So once I put that in, I think I'll, I'll wait on this until I have that put in here because that control stick really moves back and forth in here a lot. And there's two other cables that come from there. So I wanna make sure there's a clearance on everything. But I know for right now, this will work pretty nice having these cables just uh, hugging this, the center tunnel all the way forward. I just wanted to mention regarding putting things like these clamps in your airplane, you can see I have one, two, three clamps on that center tunnel, and it's on the interior of the airplane. So you'll notice I have these rounded screws here instead of a regular AN you know, hex bolt. And the reason I use these is because they're inside the airplane. People could brush up against them. Their clothes could go over them or something like that. They're just smoother. They're not gonna scratch somebody. They're nicer looking. It just looks a little more finished in here. Also pay attention when you're doing stuff like this to the position you put these. For example, there's gonna be a, obviously a top cover on here and it, there's gonna be screws that go in there to hold that on. Notice how on these, these clamps or these screws, I have them positioned right under the other screw. Or I could go in between, doesn't matter, but it's just, it's lined up with something. People notice that kind of stuff. And then up here on the forward center tunnel, I have a clamp on the inside of here too. And notice that I put, put the clamp right in between these two holes or these two other screws. It just 
it makes things even and symmetrical. You know, if you put the, the screw right here, then it, it's just, it's not centered on anything. It just doesn't look quite as good. It's little details like that that will make your airplane stand out. Well, it's been about a week since I've got this avionics tray in and I've started playing with some of the cables. I'll show you a couple little things I've done up here and then I'll explain why I kind of need an engine. I haven't done a lot up here, but you can see I have these little clamps, a couple of them screwed to the edge of this tray. And what I'm trying to do is just organize the wires neatly. So these wires will come around and go to the other side and these wires from this cable come out and go around here. Now you'll see on each side, I have a wire with a connector on it that comes out of the main cable into the EFIS screen. And that goes into this little connector right here that is on the backup battery, which is right here. There's one on each end. So what I'm going to do with this wire is I'll cut off of about a foot and a half of this so it will come around very neatly and just plug right into this uh, connection like that. Now the reason why I've realized I kind of need an engine in here to do this is because there's a lot of things yet that get mounted on the firewall. I will have to mount a battery somewhere. I have two solenoids that need to be mounted. And I'm also going to have a grounding lug and on the back of that grounding lug is a they call it a forest of tabs it's just a whole bunch of tabs for all the air all the grounds like everything in here all the lights and avionics has a ground there's probably like 30 or 40 different grounds so they'll all connect to one place but i don't i don't know where to mount any of that yet because with this engine which will be a light combing I'm going to, I'm not sure what's behind the engine. Like, I don't know how much space there is. I don't know where the cabin heat tube will have to go on here, you know. Um, I don't know where the throttle will come down and connect to the engine or the mixture control and things like that. So without the battery and the grounding lug and the, the ground tabs and the, the positive ground and or positive bus and all that kind of stuff. I don't know where to mount any of that yet. If I don't know where to mount it, then I don't know where to route the wires. Like you can see here, I have these two. These are from the left and right EFIS screens. They, they'll come up here and go to the ground. And then I also have, where is it? Right down here. These are the, the there's two in each bundle. So there's four all together, but one for each screen. This will come down and go to the the bus, the main bus, which is basically a copper strip that goes on the back of the circuit breakers. So, I mean, this technically, I could, I could do that. But all of these grounds and things like that, and then even the, the big cable that comes from the, uh, the 220, I think it's called, the engine monitor, there's gonna be a whole bunch of, of cables and sensors and stuff that have to go through the firewall somewhere um, out to the engine and wire up. And I just, you know, I don't want to drill a hole right here to have everything come out of the firewall if there's something else for the engine it needs mounted there, like the voltage regulator or something. So anyway, it's the first time during this build where I realized that I better get an engine on here pretty soon. Now I figure since I'm not getting too involved right now of running cables and wires because I don't know where components go, I thought I would start really kind of thinking about the main basic electrical system for the airplane. I set up this large whiteboard on my workbench and I'm just plotting out the basics of the electrical system. And I would caution you guys not to just look at this and copy it, which I don't know if anybody would, because this is just a preliminary drawing. There could be errors, things could change. But if we start over here at the battery, Obviously one end goes to the ground, then it goes over to the master solenoid with the, the master switch here. And then once that's on, that'll come over and power the main bus. But it'll also come down here to the starter solenoid with the key. And you can see that's got a, a, a circuit breaker there going to the bus for, for power. But anyway, when you turn the key, that'll turn the starter. And then continuing up here, 
I have 50 to 60 amp circuit breaker because I've seen drawings with 50 amp and I've seen them with 60. So I'm not sure exactly which one I need to use. And what I'm probably going to do with this, just like I did with my cruiser, after I have it all drawn out to where I think it's perfect, I'll send the drawing over to Steinair and then just you know hire them to basically look at it, tell me exactly what size wire gauge I need um, and, and they can tell me things like this if I need a 50 or 60 amp. But then there's the shunt from Dynon, which goes to the alternator. Then there's the alternator field switch with the circuit breaker to the main bus. And if we look back over here at the center console, on one of my previous videos, I was debating on which switch to put here. This is the master switch, and you can see it's one of those locking switches that you have to pull out to actuate. And this was either going to be the fuel pump or an avionics master. And what it's going to be now is that alternator field switch. So it's gonna be master and the alternator. And then up in the panel here, I will have the fuel pump switch here. That leaves the avionics master, but I may not actually include an avionics bus. It seems a lot of electrical systems are pretty standard like this. And I'm not really sure I need an avionics bus because all of the dyno equipment can be on during the engine start. The only thing at this point I'm not sure of is the GPS, if that can be on or not. But even if it can't, all I have to do is just turn the GPS off at the, the GPS itself. So anyway, right now, like I said, I'm just debating on whether to use an avionics bus. But going with the, the diagram here, you can see everything comes over to the main bus and everything's run with a, a circuit breaker off of there. And some of some components have a switch, but all I did was I just went down here and drew everything out or listed everything that will have a switch or a circuit breaker. All right, this video is getting too long as it is, so I will end it here. Now, I have taken a little bit of a break from this and all the wiring and everything, and I'm working on the first fiberglass fairing that's going on the back of the airplane. I'll show you that on the next video. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. If you don't mind, hit the like button, it helps out the channel. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.